All right, guys, this is Ben Jammin. I go by XBenJamminX on Twitter and all my DFS handles. We are here with Crazy Gaby, the beard himself. Gaby, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, give me a little background information, where you're from, um, how you got started in DFS, and um, why you love it so much. Yeah, absolutely. So I am from the heart of Ohio, Columbus, uh, actually about 15 minutes southeast of Columbus. And I've lived here my entire life, so there's not a whole lot of interesting story going on there. The way I got into fantasy sports was uh, somebody back when I was, I think, 19, 20 years old, asked me if I wanted to get in their fantasy football league. And I said, sure. And it's been kind of, uh, you could say downhill or uphill ever since, depending on which way you choose to look at it. But about five years ago, I heard about this thing called Fandle. I started playing. I started my own blog. Um, kind of miraculously, there was no real work put in on my part. I managed to get an opportunity to write for Chet Gresham's site at the time, which was rasball.com. He's since sold that site and he now owns and operates. I still believe he, I, I believe he still owns and operates uh, the host of fake sites like the fake football, the fake basketball, et cetera. And uh, I started writing there as well and then started doing a live stream from there. Uh, there was no live streams for daily fantasy at that time. This was a, just about four years ago. And that live stream started to get 50, 60, 75, 100 people, gained a little traction, moved over to dailyfantasyradio.com, which was my first site. Uh, that went pretty well. We started to get about 200, 250 listeners. Then um, Rotor Grinders, shortly after I started Daily Fantasy Radio, about three months, four months later, started Grinders Live. And then eventually um, they asked, well, Dan asked me to come over and work at Grinders Live instead. So I closed up shop at Daily Fantasy Radio, moved over to Grinders Live. And that was up until uh, last November when I decided to, uh, to part ways with Roto Grinders. And that's where I'm at today. Awesome, man. And um, so if anyone doesn't know, Gaby was on Grinders Live on Roto Grinders, which was, is uh, a fantasy podcast that they do daily. Uh, they do it a few times a day. But he was the guy for the longest time. When I got oh, introduced shucks. to Roto Grinders, it was the beard that took over the site. It was the first thing you noticed when you walked into the Grinders Live room, per se. So uh, I'm glad to have you, Gaby. Thank you very much. And and so uh, we represent DailyRotoSharks.com, um, me and my partner, CG. So what we do is we like to give interviews, and we like to teach people in tutorials and give spreadsheets on how to play DFS better. Now, Gaby is a part of DailyFantasyCircuit.com, which just launched Monday. Mm -hmm. And I would really like to learn a little bit more about the website. So for anybody who doesn't know, Gaby, can you give us a little introduction on what DailyFantasyCircuit.com is? Absolutely. And before I kind of talk about the actual site itself, I want to give you guys a little bit of info on the broader idea at play when I started this. This was something that was on my mind um, shortly after I left Rotor Grinders. It's something that I decided to take a risk on. And really, the entire point of the site is, you know, somebody has to take the first step towards encouraging a, a healthy daily fantasy economy. And I don't think, or nor am I, you know, delusional enough to think that I can come in and be the one who changes everything or the one who makes everything better. But I certainly think that there is some definite imbalance in the economy. It's, I think it's definitely an unhealthy economy. And you know, frankly, there's a lot of sites out there that have a great product to offer that haven't done anything wrong. You know, they weren't a part of this entire mess that uh, has has sort of you know bubbled to the surface with FanDuel and DraftKings over the past six to twelve months. And you know, even before they were struggling to get players and eyeballs on their site because they refused to spend an ungodly amount of money advertising nonstop like FanDuel and DraftKings did. Right. You know, you can have your own opinions on whether you think a strategy like that is good or bad. Uh, yeah. But one thing that's not an opinion is that if you don't spend that kind of money and your competitors are, you're definitely going to be faced with, uh, at the very least, an uphill battle. And that's kind of where these sites found themselves. Then, not only that, they get the uphill battle of being grouped in with all of the, the negative aspects of daily fantasy, which further harms their opportunity to become you know, a, a profitable and successful daily fantasy business. And some of these smaller sites that people have never played on have some amazing things to offer. And so what we decided, myself and my team, when we wanted to start Daily Fantasy Circuit, is that we were A, not going to feature FanDuel or DraftKings at all. 
which I think may be a first for a daily fantasy content site. I don't know yeah, if yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know if one has ever done that before. Uh, but we also decided that uh, we wanted to incentivize players continually to try out these smaller sites, right? Because you might sign up for Fantasy Aces or Draft Pot at Rotor Grinders when there's some great promotions going on. Mm-hmm. But as soon as those promotions end, what do you do? You go back to playing at FanDuel, you go back to playing at DraftKings. And mm-hmm. understandably so, the prize pools are bigger, there's more players. I totally get it. You know, this is not a knock on anybody who's chosen to play FanDuel or DraftKings over I'm other sites. I'm furious FanDuel right now. I'm absolutely yeah. furious with them. They changed their scoring for MLB. <laughs> It's so I, ridiculous. I see I, a lot I, of people tweeting right now about yeah. how it's it's basically made a bunch of ties at the top of the leaderboard. I've but. been saying that for uh, since I noticed it a couple of weeks ago, and I've been tweeting it out all the time. I've been tweeting it out since day one a couple of days ago nonstop, and I said there was going to be a ton of ties once you remove that um, the negatives for yeah the outs. It's it's crazy, and um, and people people liked it. They liked the higher scoring, I guess, but not me, man. And it really put a bad taste in my mouth. Well, yeah, and, um, you know, again, that's not uh, – I, I just don't want people to think that I'm discouraging them from playing at FanDuel and DraftKings. I still play at DraftKings a good deal myself. Uh, but, you know, really what it is is people need to have a reason to play at these smaller sites. They need, I guess, a jump start, if you will, a little bit of a, an incentive. And so the Daily Fantasy Circuit was born out of this idea that if we can encourage an economy, uh, sort of a you know symbiotic ecosystem where everybody is benefiting off of everyone else's participation, we incentivize players to want to play on these smaller sites – And in turn, these sites become more healthy and we all grow together. And instead of money sort of stagnating in one area, it continues to flow freely. And it's obviously a risk, but uh, to kind of go into the the, the finer details of it, you can go to dailyfantasycircuit.com right now and you can actually hover over the circuit tab at the top of the page. And guys, uh, I'm about to actually do that right now. Oh, good, good, good. You You can, uh, yeah, you can hover over that and... uh, you can either choose the learn, you can click on learn more if you want to get a little more details about the circuit, or you can click sign up now if you just want to go straight into that. Um, well, but yeah, so you've got it up, up there. You don't have to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> the, uh, the way it works is everything is broken down into seasons. Each season is two months long. So if we start with opening day until the end of May, that's season one, eight total weeks in season one. And each week has its own weekly leaderboard of $5,000. So that's $5,000 times eight weeks. That's $40,000. And then there is a season one championship, which has $10,000 in it. So $50,000 total that we are giving away uh, just for folks playing on the Daily Fantasy Circuit. It's completely free to create an account. And so that season like one ranking champion- system. Uh, sort of. I'll, uh, I'll I'll get into that in just a second, but uh, I wanted to, to let you guys know too. The one of the things that we've built into it is that season one championship that offers ten thousand dollars to folks. It's going to be the the eight weekly winners, the next twelve highest people who accumulate points. So uh, you can't have more than one seed into the championship. So that's twenty folks, and then we're also going to select twenty folks at random. And the only requirement is that they've played at least twenty five circuit events in season one so uh, there's 48 total events in season one they just have to get to roughly half of that number with 25 events and we're going to pull 20 random people to put in the season one championship too so you can not even perform well on any of the weekly leaderboards and you can still accidentally get entered into a 40-man contest with ten thousand dollars in prizes that pays out to all 40 places so we think that's pretty cool and uh, the way it works is there are six featured sites every day there's going to be a different contest at one of our six sites that we're working with if you sign up for that site or if you already have an account, you just have to enter your username. We do not require people to sign up uh, with all of our links or anything like that. We do ask that if you don't have an account, we'd love you to sign up with one of our links. Um, you enter your usernames. You play in that one featured contest that we tell you about. You can actually click the uh, schedule tab or the schedule drop down by hovering over the circuit. And it'll tell you which event uh, is happening for that day. You play in that contest, and when the contest is over, our CTO, Brian, actually can go in, take the results of that contest, and filter out just the people who have entered a username in their Daily Fantasy Circuit account for that site. A second leaderboard emerges with that information, and we dish out leaderboard points via those people that are left over end of the week. Of course, the highest total amount of points wins first place, second place, third place, and so on. It's very interesting. Um I like that idea a lot. I think it's going to give the smaller sites at at the very least a little bit more exposure. Um, One thing that I like about that is 
many of the smaller sites are under the radar when it comes to the attorney generals and in new york i can play a lot of them <laughs> so that that uh interests me very much so um so uh tell me a little bit more about it so i, I see you have strategy tabs you have the daily tabs you have podcasts one of which is with andy singleton our video <laughs> guy um and guys if you don't know him he runs nickel press tv so check that out. We link to him all the time. But tell us a little bit more about some of these other tabs besides the circuit itself. Yeah, so uh, you know, one of the things you have to have at a daily fantasy content site, it's pretty much standard issue at this point, is you have to have your comprehensive daily write-up. You know, Roto Grinders has the grind down. Daily Roto has the uh, you know big report that either comes out from uh, Dink Peace or Leone. Or I haven't been there in about a year or so, so they might have other people writing, but. Uh, anybody who's been there before knows they have this giant comprehensive write-up that comes out. Fantasy Insiders does the same thing, and just about every other content site out there does it. So we definitely have that every single day. Um, if it's an evening slate, we try to have everything posted by 1 p.m. Eastern. If it's an early morning slate or an early afternoon slate, rather, like 1 o'clock Eastern for MLB games, we try to have all that stuff posted by 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, then we also have a podcast that's going to be starting soon. Um, they had a few delays getting the site up and running. I am the founder of the site, so a lot of that falls on me in terms of having to uh, to deal with it and make sure everything's running properly. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to start the podcast stream yet. Tell us about um, your day. Tell yeah, us about your day on Twitch. Yeah, that, uh, you know, I'll get to uh, hopefully start the podcast stream tomorrow or Thursday, and that's going to be a Monday through Friday thing. I'll be back on the airwaves weekly. But, yeah, that's what has consumed my time today is – uh, our live shows are actually going to be streamed through Twitch. We like the functionality of being able to create a custom overlay. Uh, we like to be able, you know, having a little more uh, creative control than some other platforms offer. Um, obviously, when I was with Roto Grinders, it was great having a full-time producer. It's not a place that we're at right now. We hope to get there at some point. But uh, Twitch just offers the amount of customization we need. That being said, very fickle system to work with, especially some of the third-party software, um, in particular OBS is the uh, the platform we're going to be working with. And so I spent about six hours today trying to uh, basically fi you know, finagle with everything to make sure we had it set up right. And uh, that's actually what ended up delaying this stream. So I appreciate, again, you, Ben, uh, being generous enough to, uh, to wait on me for a few minutes on that. And uh, then, of course, we have our lineup alerts. That's kind of the last major thing that we feature. And the way our lineup alerts are different uh, they'll be starting in another day or two as well. Those will be daily, not just Monday through Friday. They'll be on the weekends. Um, they're text message based, which uh, some some places do offer the text message lineup alerts. But we are actually going to take it uh, a step further, and we're offering audio analysis with our lineup alerts. And the way that works is there's this really cool social media app. It's brand new. It's called Anchor. It's super slick. It's only available on iOS right now. So if you have an iOS device, I highly recommend you check it out. It's basically like Instagram for mm -hmm. audio files up to uh, to two minutes in length. So you see oh. one post on your page at a time, it's an up and down scroll, and uh, you just click the play button, and depending on who it is or who you're following, an audio clip plays. And the really cool part is, when you reply to somebody, you don't reply with text, you actually reply with an audio comment of your own. So if there's like 10 comments on your initial audio file, they call them waves, if there's 10 comments on your wave, those are 10 audio comments that people can listen to that are responses to whatever you said. So that's that's kind of periphery, but it's still a really cool functionality. And um, the 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 signature or the um, the thing that sold it for us is you can actually take the link to a wave, and you can put it in the text message. So let's say for instance Kyrie Irving is out and Matthew Della Vadova is starting, you would get a text message that said you know Kyrie Irving is out, Matthew Della Vadova is starting, and then there would be a link after that sentence. You either click on that link. Um, on your mobile device or on your desktop, depending on how you get texting, text messages delivered to you, and it'll open up in your browser if you don't have the Anchor app installed. So it's it's good for even non-iOS devices, and awesome. it'll play wow. that little up to two-minute audio analysis, giving you like a full uh, breakdown of what we are, you know, what we're recommending doing based on this piece of late information. You can get a lot said in two minutes. You yeah. you know. Um, that that's pretty awesome. I love the idea. Uh, so when you click, when it clicks on the link, it brings you to um, that wave, right? Can you yep. also have and some kind of uh, player card that it links you to as well? Um, you know, we might be we might be able to, but uh, at this point, we're at this point we're going to stick with um, just the wave, mainly because <laughs> we're still you know still being a startup and everything. It's um, you know. 
trying to get our uh, our footing underneath of us first. But that's a good idea. And and frankly, like I think the more innovative lineup alerts can get, and the more on the go they can get in terms of uh, providing people with added value in their everyday lives. If you're at school, if you're at work, if you're in transit somewhere, I think that's the way to go with lineup alerts, right? Because it's basically content that be, can be consumed wherever you happen to be. So I think it's a good idea and something we might actually look into. Well, man, uh, I really like that idea. I think that's an amazing idea because not only can you get the alert, but you're getting someone's explanation of it. And, you know, it, for me, at least, you know, if I'm, if I just click something real quick and I hear crazy Gaby, like Dova Dova's in and I think he's going to get 25 <laughs> minutes and this is the reason why, and he's playing a bad defense. Like that's such a better breakdown than if I got, you know, an alert and, and just looking at it and trying to decipher what they really meant by it. And, and you can get a lot more said within that minute or two than you can get in, you know, uh, a page full of iPhone uh, alerts. And a lot gets missed in um, sort of the nuance of speech. Or, you know, a lot can be said in the nuance of speech that gets missed in, in type, right? Like, you can hear me say, eh, but I don't know if I'm going to play Matthew Delladova or not. And, and people really will take that cadence to mean, yeah, I'll probably stay away from that guy. Versus if you type, I'm not really sure if Matthew Delladova is a great play. It doesn't really convey the exact same thing. So uh, exactly. we think there is a lot more room for, uh, you know, for folks who are looking for that sort of thing. We think there's a lot more room for, uh, you know, in-depth analysis just by virtue of hearing someone's voice versus reading stuff. Uh, I see a good comment, by the way, from Nick Ward says, uh, so since I'm in New York and can only play in Fantasy Aces or Fantasy Feud, does that mean I can only enter a max of 16 contests, eight weeks times two sites, and not reach the necessary 25 entries to qualify for the championship? So great question, Nick. Thank you very much for asking it. Yes, unfortunately, it does mean that, but uh, I, I think I can break this. Um, I, th I think I'm, I'm cool with this. I've talked it over with my team. So... Uh, I'm kind of a you know 100 miles per hour type guy. Once I have one thing done, I want to move on to the next thing. And so we are actually right now um, developing, not sure when it will be finished, but a daily fantasy circuit for only people who are in banned states. Huh. And we're working on some ways of, uh, I don't want to say circumventing because that's a very dangerous legal term, but we are working on some creative solutions. That's a term that everyone can get behind, creative solutions. I've been creative the past couple days. <laughs> we are working on some creative solutions to allow um, the incentivization of folks who are in banned states. Because as you know, a lot of people in banned states, they can still log on and they can still technically play a free contest that has no prizes being given out. They just mm -hmm. can't. No, you can't. Well, some sites might not be able to, but I know some of them will still allow you to play in like a free contest. You just can't play for money or win prizes. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm, on FanDuel, I can't even join a free contest. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're definitely one of them that's uh, going a little overboard with mm -hmm. the protections to make sure that, uh, you know, nothing gets past their system. So I think, that, I think they've just blocked everybody from getting in. They're the contest. ones under the scrutiny. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, some of the smaller sites, even if they're not allowed to be in a market, you know, you can. Some of them still allow you to enter into contests for free and play for free. So, even then, you could technically still have a leaderboard, because who's going to play in a contest like that other than somebody who is playing in it for a certain reason? Then it just comes right. down to how can we incentivize people? Do we need to give away iPads? Uh, can it not be money? Uh, we definitely have our lawyer looking into exactly what we can do, but we want to create a solution for people who are in banned states so they can play daily fantasy every night for free, not having to worry about getting their, you know, their asses kicked in the courts and still enjoy the game that they love. I, I like that idea very much. Um, I think it's giving a lot of opportunity for the smaller sites to really show what they can do. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways to play on different sites um, you know, with different types of structures, you know, with different sites having late swap or sites having, um, you know, two pitchers or one pitcher in baseball. So there's there's a lot of nuances that, you know, trying out so many different sites, people can really find their niche and what they're best at. Um, so I think it's a great idea. I think people are really going to enjoy it. I think people are going to make a ton of referral money off of each other. And um, I could already picture me and my friends like, hey, man, I'll use your referral link for this one if you use mine for this one. So I think yeah. that's something that's going to happen and um, benefit everybody involved, to be honest. So I, I think that's definitely something we can do. By the way, I just, uh, I, I just saw the gif of uh, Josh Donaldson 
Did did you see that by any chance? No, no, it wasn't. Oh well, he's he's performing a um an unspeakable act with a baseball bat while sitting next to the dugout. Oh my god! Hopefully he has a crying Jordan face on. Uh, this is yeah, this is pretty cool. Anyways, I'm sorry. I apologize. That is a distraction. So no, it's all good. So with that distraction, um, let's move on to something else. Do you want to talk about what happened with you and Roto Grinders? Um, because you know you're not there anymore, and you used to be. So something might have happened in between. You know, Ed uh, Ed Fear says, uh, "Do you have any real quick? If before we get into that, he says, do you have your eyes on any particular talent within the current DFS landscape as individuals you would like to have provide content for Daily Fantasy Circuit? Absolutely, I won't sleep. I won't sleep a wink until Dink Piece is on my team. So nice. that's by the way, that's uh, that's all sarcasm." Uh, Dink and his crew absolutely hate me. Um, I wouldn't even put it this way. You know how like Lamarcus Aldridge this offseason when uh, he was you know going around in free agency, he at least gave the Lakers the courtesy of a meeting. And then I believe because the meeting was a complete shit show, he gave them another meeting so they could actually like have their stuff. Because apparently their first leader was like, by the way, like we're the Lakers, we've won a lot of titles, so uh, sign with us. And yeah. that was the extent of the first. Like, do like Stefan Curry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like the uh, you know the, the just the 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 tangent on that is, I wouldn't even get the meeting with them. You know, like Lucas Aldridge at least gave the Lakers a meeting. I wouldn't even get the meeting if I was trying to sign Dink or any of the guys over there. So we get the uh, that's, DeAndre that's, Jordan treatment. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a little bit of uh you know in, in <sighs> the uh, in the, the the midst of it DFS humor. But uh, what was the question you were asking? You said uh, rotor grinders. You wanted to know a little bit well, about uh, what. Well, do you? Who do you actually have? Um, do you have anyone in general that you want to have doing your your content? Any any names that we might be familiar with? Well, I'll tell you what. We are pursuing a number of people. I think that they would not be comfortable if I uh, spoke their names mm -hmm. on air just because nothing is set in stone yet. A lot of pieces are moving. But uh, we certainly welcome any and all talent. And, uh, again, these, uh, these these words that have to be chosen very carefully. We are aggressively pursuing all talented daily fantasy content contributors, uh, regardless of their affiliation. So we'll leave it at that. Guys, if you're talented and you produce content, send them an email <laughs> with some articles that you've written and maybe they'll get to it. And maybe. I'll get aggressive, like I said. And I'll get very aggressive. Be, they'll be aggressively pursuing people with talent. So you said um, you wanted to know a little bit about the departure from Roto Grinders. Roto Grinders, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's not really a story that's fraught with uh, you know much personal, uh, like, like, a, like a personal story. So much as it is, uh, I would say like a overall philosophy. And and what I mean by that is, there's no like you know personal animosity between myself and any person at Roto Grinders. So it wasn't this you know knock down drag out people screaming at each other, you know, the, the kids right. are frightened and hiding under the stairs type deal. That's, that's not what it was all, you know, that, that's not what it was like at all. But I had some real differences with uh, some of the ways that rotor grinders chose to go about their, you know, partnership, I guess you would call it with FanDuel and DraftKings. Now, you know, understand, and I do understand that when somebody is making you a, you know, literal metric shit ton of money, you have a real incentive to at least have their back. You don't have to condone or actively encourage their behavior, but you at least try to have their back, right? Or you at least try right. to not be party yeah. to piling on to them when everybody else is doing so. I get that. But there was a moment for me, and we'll call it an inflection point, when all this mess was happening after the um, Max Dowry, Channing Fry incident, which if you guys aren't in the know, there's a lot of articles out there. I'm not going to waste my time talking about it now because everyone, most people have heard a million times. There's a lot of articles. Just Google Max Dowry, Channing Fry. You'll figure it out soon enough. But when all that stuff happened, uh, we basically knew for the first time without a shadow of a doubt that the things we were being told by FanDuel and DraftKings were lies because they, you know there's no way they could not notice something like that if they actually had the internal checks and balances in place to notice something like that. And so that's when everybody sort of swelled together as a community and demanded that FanDuel and DraftKings address this issue instead of skirting around it like they did. And if you guys remember, DraftKings and FanDuel went uh, radio silent for a couple of weeks, and then they came back with, wait for it, a change to the terms of service as opposed to actually answering a any of the questions. In terms of service. That's something yeah. that <laughs> I morally disagree with so much. Yeah. So much. And, you know, that's always been in the back of my mind when thinking about the bigger sites. And, you know, people always 
approach me when when I talk about fantasy and they're like, oh, well, I heard about that whole scandal and people cheating and this. And that. I've I've always defended what happened as if um as if they could do no wrong kind of thing. I guess you know, and that's just that's just the way I saw it. You know, I love FanDuel. They helped me get out of debt and they helped me pay off my student loans and everything. So like I always had that in the back of my head. Like damn, there definitely is some shady stuff going on when you, you change the terms of service to help out the bigger people and not to help out the smaller people. So yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, so you know, I'm, that, that was really the inflection point for me because at that point, um, you know, Roto-Grinder still had yet to, you know, speak out one way or the other, which again, I get, but yeah. No sooner does DraftKings change their terms of service, but uh, some folks who are, I'm not going to call anyone out by name, if you guys have the, the wherewithal to go and look at those forums and dig through like 100 plus pages, by all means, be my guest. Uh, but some some folks who were in charge of managing Rotor Grinders popped into that thread, and uh, rather than even addressing the issues that their community had been clamoring about for weeks, said, you know, we have uh, decided to create this awesome tool that's going to take advantage of uh, these new rules, these new changes to the terms of service, which they didn't say this, but had been illegal for the entire existence of the Daily Fantasy websites up until that point via their own wow. terms of service. Oh, and all nice. of a sudden, now that they've changed it, we're just going to make a tool for you guys to use and essentially try to make you fat and happy quick enough that you don't sit back and think about what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. And for me, that you know kind of just confirmed and, and kind of entrenched my stance in this idea that you can't be a site for the community and a site that is so dependent and reliant on, you know, sort of the hand that feeds you that you have to straddle the fence constantly. It just, it, it ends up never working. You have to choose a side. You know what I call that? The other. What's that? That's, that's the Hillary Clinton. That's the, <laughs> I take money from the big banks. They just fund my entire campaign more than anyone else in the election. Well, listen, listen, Ben, we are, uh, we're here to make daily fantasy great again. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Oh my God, it's yeah. it's ridiculous. That's that's what we're doing, man, and that's that's what I'm trying to do. Um, the the thing that I've noticed, and my partner CG and we we noticed this probably at the end of last year. Well, we just started hopping on Twitter because I was writing articles and we were just gaining some exposure. And I noticed how many people were selling lineups, but more specifically, how many people were buying lineups. And that that made you know that struck a nerve with me, like damn, there's this many people, you know, just straight up buying other lineups. They, you know, they maybe want to learn, but they just, they get crushed all the time. So I started helping people out and then people were like, you know what? I didn't have to use a lineup provider today. You helped me with my research and you told me how to do this. And now I could use this site and this, and I got free information and all this kind of stuff. And I felt like we were really helping the community to, to grow in terms of just their knowledge and having fun with the game and not just, you know, put in some lineup you have no control over and just not, well, first of all, you're paying your money to someone to also then pay to enter your contest. <laughs> and then you're also getting screwed with rake. So you, you're, you're basically like triple taxing yourself before you even hit any kind of win. So that, that's something that, you know, we've been trying to get away from uh, personally. And it looks like you're trying to, you know, just change the landscape of how people look at the sites and play the sites. So I think yeah. we have a great combination of, of things going here and I'm glad that we brought you on and we could really talk about this kind of stuff. And um, one question I'd like to ask you, where do you see DFS going? What do you, th what do you see happening to the ecosystem? And do you think a bunch of fish are going to drop out? Do you think there's going to be a lot of new people entering um, with, with, you know, people thinking it's illegal and all this kind of stuff. Like, where do you see it all going? Uh, I'll answer that. Can I go back just one second? Go back, back to whatever okay. you need to I was going to say real quick. I'll, I'll definitely answer that. Uh, I'll do it. It's a Kanye thing. Just hold on a second. I'm going to let you finish. But, you I'll know, Beyonce, you Beyonce should have definitely. Anyways, uh, to kind of put a, a neat little bow and wrap up that rotor grinders thing, because I kind of left it hanging there for, uh, you know, at that, that moment or that inflection point, so to speak. Essentially, the next six months or so after that entailed just a lot of internal discussions between myself, some folks from those companies, FanDuel and DraftKings, other people within the community. Those conversations will re will forever remain sealed because, you know, frankly, that's not something I would ever violate regardless of my difference of opinion with anybody. Uh, right. But, you know, it basically boiled down to it didn't seem like 
I was ever going to be able to see eye to eye with a lot of the policy that existed there. And, you know, at that point it was kind of, you know, on me to leave at that point. I, I don't think they would have forced me out. I don't think they would have fired me. So, you know, anybody, I, I appreciate the people who came to my defense and, you know, thought that that was the case. I don't think they would have ever done that. But I also think that when you have such a difference of opinion and you're not going to back down and, and basically what it amounted to is things I was going to say, things I was going to do, i.e. the article I helped contribute to, um, you know, co- you know, talked and gave some quotes to for uh, the New York Times is going to actively or indirectly even hurt their business. It's just, in my opinion, not right for me to stay there at that point. It's just not a good, not a good thing for me to do from even a moralistic stance. So Makes that was sense. when it was time to, to part ways. Basically, that's how we got to where we are now. And to answer your question about the direction of Daily Fantasy in the future, I think that Daily Fantasy is going to uh, necessarily have to take a step back. But I think what's important to realize as we look towards the future of Daily Fantasy is that this spike that was created by all of these artificial factors was not representative of what daily fantasy is or should have been to begin with. Because if we would have just taken the slow but steady track of growth where we work out the legal issues, we work out the regulation issues, we work out the competitive issues slowly over the course of five, 10 years as we build up this awesome industry, then maybe five to 10 years down the road, we are organically sitting at the place DFS was at the beginning of this NFL season. Right, and not just moving to blitz everybody. Right, not just trying to blitz and just overwhelm the market all of a sudden. You know, one of the biggest problems in in, in emerging markets is, you know, when they get flooded, people tend to, you know, think about any sort of bubble that has ever existed economically. You know, the the housing bubble, the the tech bubble. All these bubbles get created because people just flood these marketplaces instead of allowing long-term organic growth. And that's what you saw with Daily Fantasy. I think anybody with... Uh, you know, any sort of keen economic guy, certainly people who are far smarter than I am, could see that this was just unsustainable. You can't bring all these people in and expect it to stay this way. You combine that with all the legal issues and people are saying, "Uh uh-uh, Daily Fantasy is not for me anymore. Those guys are a bunch of cheaters. And I do think it set us back a little bit. But I think it's important as we move forward to remember that even though the numbers might not be anywhere near as impressive as they have been at times over the past year, year and a half, that as long as we are still growing, we'll get to that place eventually. I think we just have to work through these these issues of, of legality first before we can actually get to that place. So I think Daily Fantasy is in a good spot. I just think it's sort of got to figure itself out and continue to grow slowly. And more than anything, I think this should be a cautionary tale to myself and you, everybody listening. All of us are responsible for safeguarding this industry and making sure that we just don't stay silent. I think that was the biggest problem is too many people stayed silent and allowed things to happen. I think if some prominent folks, myself included, would have spoken up earlier and more often, I think maybe some of these things could have been avoided. But, you know, we kind of got complacent. And I think a lot of us are responsible for this, not just the big companies, even though at the end of the day, it does fall on them. So that is my long winded answer. I hope that wasn't, uh, wasn't too intense. I definitely agree that, you know, there should have been people speaking out and we can't name any kind of names because, you know, they're, it doesn't matter who it is, people who are winning, people who are losing, just people who are in the limelight, there should have been a little bit more attention called to yep. uh, the you know lack of regulation. I started but, far too late. I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I, by the time I started speaking out against it, when I realized like, hey, this is not above board, I mean, I, I had already contributed just as much as anybody to the damage and was, you know, it was a battle that simply couldn't be won. So, you know, it's, I, I don't think of myself as anything other than a person who acted too late. Well, I, I have a question uh, here from Eddie. Uh, what do you think about the registration fees called in for a lot of pending state legislation that would be particularly onerous for smaller DFS sites? Okay. I think it could be a killer depending on how big it is. <laughs> I think um, it's going to be a killer depending on how big it is and depending on how they word it. If these guys can pay it off over five years out of uh, you know X, Y, or Z excess, I've seen some plans, I think, that allow you to, instead of paying your tax, you can pay towards this thing. Um mm-hmm some way of working it out. I don't know the, I don't know all the legalities and everything exactly of it, but it's really going to depend on how it gets paid. Right. Cause if you're saying 500 grand up front, that's going to fold a lot of sites or at least cause them to leave your state. If you're saying 500 grand over five years, okay, that's, that's a little more doable at least like at least we can stay in business, evaluate our options, maybe pay it for a couple of years and then bow out in three years down the road if it's not working out. So that's my, my macro view of it, my micro view of it within the industry. And, and it's time to throw a little bit of shade and I absolutely will do so. Um, this 
entire idea is complete bullshit and the FSTA knows it. And I apologize if any of you out there are a part of the FSTA who are listening, if you hold the FSTA in high regard, I simply cannot sit back and say that they are anything other than at the very least um, fundamentally not looking out for the best interest of the DFS players and the long-term health of the daily fantasy economy. I mean, that's, that's, I think fundamentally you have to say that why else would a board that's in charge or at least proclaims of, of no other, you know, validity other than their own word that they are going to be the, the champions or the white knights or the regulators of the daily fantasy industry while having the heads of FanDuel, DraftKings, and Rotor Grinders sitting on their board of directors. I mean, right. it I'm doesn't get any that. more hypocritical than that. It, yeah. it can, and not only that, who does a policy like this benefit? They've been advocating this policy, I believe, in at least to some degree. I will say that I am not 100% certain, so if I'm wrong on that, I apologize. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter or whatever. But I am, I'm fairly certain that at least in some degree, this is something they've been working with legislators on and something that they are advocating for. And who does that sink? The little guys. Who can pay that, that fee? The big guys. I mean, it, to me, it is a huge failure. Validation. Yeah, it's, it's a huge failure. And it's just, it, smells, it's, it smelled awful to me at the beginning when those guys got a seat on the board. It smelled even worse when they tried to come out and tell lawmakers, no, no, don't worry about regulating daily fantasy. We'll fix it from the inside, even though Fando and DraftKings heads, the heads of the companies were on their board. And then now you got them, you know, negotiating with politicians on behalf. I don't need somebody negotiating on behalf of me if they're going to basically be looking out for the interest of these major companies that are no doubt funneling money to them somehow. It's right. anyways, that's, that's my piece. Agreed. Agreed. Um, well, one thing I could say about like legislation wise is, um, I've heard that the reason they banned it in New York, or at least FanDuel agreed to FanDuel and DraftKings agreed to pull out, was because they thought that they can get regulation passed by June here, um, a bill passed by June. So that's that's optimistic to hear. And if they don't get it passed, they have uh, September to appeal. So mm -hmm. um, that that's something um, for me at least to look forward to to see what happens with this bill because they have the appeal in September. They could have just waited until then. Um, and not pulled out and just kept it going until the appeal. But by pulling out, it makes it makes it seem like they have something in the works that they'll get passed by. Uh, Trying the, to build some goodwill with uh, the state prosecution. Exactly. Like, hey, yeah. we'll pull out now as long as you know you you promise to get this passed. Yeah. But um, all right. I have a question for you that um, I think people would appreciate. Sure. Since you since you were from Roto Grinders or uh, not from, well, you you were on the Roto Grinders Grinders Live and everything. You, you talked with a bunch of the experts and the touts. What do you think about the concern that people think that touts on Grinders Live steer them the wrong way and maybe hold back information or guide them the wrong way to make bad picks? I think that is 150% bogus that they would ever send someone in the wrong direction. I'll say this, <clears throat> and I actually agree with this. So, you know, maybe some folks out there will disagree with me, and that's fine. I'd even love to chat about it if you want to put a comment in the chat or you want to hit me up on Twitter. But I don't think that any person who plays, put it this way, the amount of money that a person makes doing Grinders Live or, frankly, working for any content site unless they own or at least own, a owners, own an ownership percentage in said Daily Fantasy content site is minuscule compared to how much they make playing Daily Fantasy. Mm -hmm. And... It's not a binary dichotomy. It's not either they give me all their plays or they're lying to me. You know, it's, it's, it's not one or yeah. the other. It can be many shades of different colors in between. And I think that every single person I worked with at Grinders Live 100% gave accurate knowledge to the best of their possible ability and shared essentially their own research with people. Hey man, uh, for some reason your uh, your mic is off. Is is it? Do you have it muted on there or something? Uh, it looks like it's back on now. Uh, okay. Where where did I cut oh, off at? It, it looked like it was only on there for like three or four seconds. It wasn't bad, but there was a <laughs> delay. There was a lag delay, and then uh, your mic shut off. But it looks like you're good now. 
Very weird. But uh, yeah, so anyways, what, I, what I'm getting at is, do I think that there are some plays that they you know, choose to keep back for themselves while also still delivering 100% accurate and helpful information to the general public? Absolutely. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if somebody says to themselves, this player, you know, these two players are guys I'm hammering tonight in tournaments. I got, you know, $25,000 in tournament lineups on the line tonight. And I don't want to tell anybody about these two guys because I think they're going to be like, you know, 2% or 1% owned, but they can still tell you everything else that's accurate about the slate and help you. They're not right. taking money away from you. They're still helping you win money. They're just also, you know, understandably keeping back a player or two for themselves because, you know, that's their primary business is playing daily fantasy. So I'll say for a player like myself who doesn't play high stakes, I never had that concern. But I think you have to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who is playing those sort of stakes and the amount of money they make providing content. And you have to be realistic about these things because, you know, if you were making that much money, but somebody said, hey, we really want to hear your opinion on things. Why are you then compelled for however much money you get for doing a show to give them something that could potentially end up costing you tens of thousands of dollars? Right, so. and and honestly, how much how much change do you think it really could affect an entire landscape? Yeah. By you know, let's say they want to wreck a, I mean, saying to steer someone wrong the wrong way and give them a never diet, do right? that. That's yeah, ridiculous. never that's do little, that. That's crazy to me because, first of all you can just say anybody's a good player for the most part and they could have a bad night. So for you to say like, Oh, they steered me wrong. They told me to play this guy. I played him. He didn't do well. And I look at their lineup that's at the top of a tournament and they don't have him. Yeah. yeah. But what about all the other hundred lineups they had? They probably had that guy and he didn't do well. So that lineup they had probably didn't do well either. Well, and, so, and especially with NBA last minute changes and, e and oh. even to some extent MLB, you know, uh, you know, Walt Weiss, the asshole that he is, finally puts the Rockies lineup out at 655 Eastern. And, you know, Tulo's not in it or, you know, Carlos Gonzalez isn't in it. You don't even know what your lineups look like by the time yeah. you end up submitting them. It's like you're, you're wondering to yourself what's lineups like. Who who did I play again? Like who's even in my lineups right now? So, you know, it's just, yeah, it's it's such a fluid thing that to, to use that argument is, is kind of ridiculous. Good. Well, um, I actually agree with you 100%. I think it's completely fair that if you have – you know, one guy that you're just like, all right, well, the reason this is my guy is because he's going to be low owned. Why yeah. would you personally just want to raise that percentage, however many points it is? And if you're hammering tournaments and you're really trying to take it down, that's not going to help you in any way, shape or form. But to tell people the exact details of the slate, you're basically telling them how you came across whatever player you're holding yeah. back. Anyway, you just do a little bit of your own research at some point. Don't just plug and play. I mean, yeah. listen, Gaby, when I very when I first started, <laughs> before I won money, the first couple of days, you know, I was looking up like, all right, MLB lineups, and I come across beer makers six pack, and I'm like, I'm using every single player. I would plug in at all six players, me and my boy, and then you know, two of them wouldn't do well, and be like, oh fuck, beer maker, like he ruined my night. <laughs> Well, I shouldn't be just plugging and playing just because right. someone said to play it. You know, like I wasn't doing my research. So like that's on me. That's that's the whole, you know, take personal responsibility kind of and thing. And I will throw one more thing out there too in that same line of thought. Um, however, somebody, let's just for instance, I'm not picking on him or singling him out, but Draft Cheat. Draft Cheat, great dude. Uh, for MLB, he's personally the person I respect the most. I believe Draft Cheat is the best major league baseball daily fantasy player on the planet. And so I listen yeah. very closely to not only who he says to play, but what we're just talking about, why he says to play them. And so even if, for instance, hypothetically, of course, I'm not assigning any action to any particular person, but hypothetically, if he were to hold back a play for himself while still giving completely accurate and helpful information about the entire slate, you could probably, if you had been listening closely enough to him and analyzing his method of how he gets to the players he gets to in the first place, Exactly. You know, technically you should be able to extrapolate that onto, you know, other players and other ideas and other stats. And you can figure out who that player is without him ever even having to say anything. And that goes to the process are some people only want picks fed to them. And that's cool. That's what people like myself and draft cheat and others exist for. We love doing that. Some people don't have the time, but mm -hmm. if you're the type of person who wants to complain about somebody who is not giving you all the best plays, you better damn well then be somebody who's actually doing your own research because you have no frame of reference from which to say that without sounding like a complete asshole if you don't actually do any research yourself because what are you even basing that on and that's, exactly. that's all i have to say i agree 
and that that's the same thing you know with with the lineup sellers when if you buy a lineup and then complain that the lineup did bad <laughs> that's, that's always on, that's on yeah. you that's you're always like, funny you, when they do that dude oh. that's that's crazy you're you're paying someone and putting your money in their hands they don't do well you have no control over it you can't bitch because you were the one who entered that lineup yep. you know you put that in you press save and that's what happened absolutely um, um but definitely interested in what you said about draft sheet and um about why he picks players that's always how i've written all of my articles i've ever written and i think that's why people like me because i've not only gave, given a pick but i actually write out blurbs to every single person of like all right this person you know they have a great matchup they have a good pace and this is for basketball um they've been averaging 30 points per game over their last five games and they only need 23 to hit value or something like that and this, that's the reason why i'm using this player now if it has something to do with injury and i'm like all right i'm using him because this guy is out and there are a few other people who benefit i may not tell you specifically who benefits but you can extrapolate that information and go yep. look it up yourself if you really want to if not and you want to be lazy that's fine but you can't, you can't complain can't complain <laughs> you, you can't, can't be like complain. well you didn't say the name of those players <laughs> you know like because yeah. i don't want to <laughs> yeah exactly no exactly 100 percent. and um you know i think the i think the last point with all of that is um you know it, it's important to give credit as well to people in the industry and this isn't me seeking people to tell me thank you I think it's important too to let the people who have helped you out know because it actually does mean something. At the end of the day, like, and I'm not talking about just plays, like sending a tip, like Vegas style. If you hit big on blindly using someone's favorite picks for the night without knowing. Next time you hit 10% right. Vegas. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, that's not that's not at all what I'm suggesting. But if you've followed a certain analyst, you know, for the course of a season and they've really helped you improve your game, circle back around and let them know. Um, you know, tell them that you appreciate it. You know, let them know because that that encouraging. You know, those encouraging words may be just what they need to hear to continue refining their process and sharing it with people. And that's how we get a an economy or a community full of informed daily fantasy players and frankly just a, a better discussion about daily fantasy in general because the next daily fantasy analyst who's gonna be big and who's gonna be awesome and entertaining and people are gonna want to hear about them and what they have to say, you know, is probably sitting there right now talking about how cool it was playing on FanDuel or DraftKings for the first time. And they're just finding sites like Roto grinders or fantasy insiders for the first time and going, wow, this is cool. And so, you know, it's, it's just important that we build community through teaching people how to fish. I agree. And, um, I actually have uh, a new, I have a, a couple series of things that we're doing on our site. And one of them is an article and it's by, um, this kid, Kasim Kasani. And I think I pronounced that right, but, uh, he's a new player. And what he did is he's chronicling his journey for us writing down in article terms of his of like you know um him starting and what he's looking at the landscape and the experience he's having and and what websites he looks at and all this different kind of stuff so um we're going to be getting other people to do the same newer players and talk about from their point of view because i'm kind of in the middle i'm not a, a pro or anything but i've been playing long enough and talking about it long enough that i see myself as an above average guy in the in the community at least um not not very well known but just my you know the amount i play and the amount i research and the amount i talk to people like i i definitely i definitely think i'm above anything resembling a newbie so that's why i wanted to have it from that perspective and i i think that's a, a good idea and we're i'm going to be doing interviews with players like that as well people who just started and just seeing their point of view and how they view things because um it's a paradigm that i can't see through anymore um, from the amount of play that I've had. What do you think about that? No, I think uh, I think it's a very fair point. And I'm uh, very excited right now, by the way, too. I was just, uh, I, I kind of moved over to Twitter to see if any questions or any buzz had happened. And I saw that uh, Chris Davis with a K, one of my favorite uh, under the radar picks for Daily Fantasy, is uh, he just hit a double. So I'm a little, little pumped nice. about that. <laughs> hey, Davis. Man. And there's, there's your tip for the night, folks. If you tuned in and you're going, what the hell? I'm listening to these guys. And they're not giving any daily fantasy advice. What is this? Play Chris Davis against lefties at a cheap price. The A's are going to the A's are gonna pinch hit for him after two or three at-bats if they bring a, a righty into pitch. But uh, he's a great uh, dong or double dong candidate in tournaments for sure. And 10% big goes to Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> Set me up on PayPal, guys. 10%. Yeah. 
Hi, right, brother. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I I loved all the information we talked about. I really appreciate you being here, guys. This is Crazy Gaby of DailyFantasyCircuit.com, and uh, pay attention to what he's going to be doing. It's really cool stuff. So, Gaby, thank you very much. Thank you so much, man. Have a great time. Oh. Yeah, no problem, man. Have a great night. Take care.